Welcome to the Video Clan. In this video, I'm going to be going for Resident Evil 0, 1, and 2 remakes, Platinum Trophy, and any DLC trophies if they do have any. I'm starting this video series with the goal of having every single Resident Evil Platinum and DLC trophies, including the really shitty spin-offs. However, almost every single Resident Evil requires like five plus playthroughs for whatever reason, or at least around there, and they're pretty long, so it takes a lot of time to do these. So if you like the content, consider subscribing. And more importantly, if you're new around here. Come on. Don't be shy. This might hurt a little. And with that out of the way, we can start our journey through every single Resident Evil and getting all of the trophies. Enjoy. Resident Evil Zero. Ah, uh, Resident Evil Zero. What a good way to start. Now, to make this confusing, so many different guys have conflicting information saying to maybe play it this way or this way. I found sort of a noob friendly route, which was best for me because you don't even get an item box in this one. So with our plan of attack, we decided to do a normal playthrough, getting all of the files and weapons. Our second playthrough would be leech hunter mode, which is an alternate mode, killing all of the enemies and grabbing all of the leeches and unlockables while also obtaining an A rank. Our third playthrough would be another leech hunter, but only grabbing 50 leeches for one of the characters. And then our fourth playthrough would be to S rank with no saving, killing all the bosses as Rebecca on normal difficulty. Our fifth playthrough would be Wesker mode, where you basically play as Wesker, and we would do this without healing because he's a little bit more overpowered. And then our last playthrough would be hard mode. With our plan of attack laid out, let's get after it, boys. As we make our way through the train at the start of the game, we find a train employee and we find the keys that we need to get through a door. However, the moment we grab them with an ambush, but this is where we can get our first trophy and lock ourselves in on the long journey of getting every Resident Evil Platinum. And for this trophy, we have to have a dog jump on us and then we have to push him off in order to get a trophy. Now, considering the hardest boss of these older Resident Evil games is the fucking camera view, I have to be ready. So I hide in the corner and I wait for the opportune moment to get the trophy. What the dog doing? After grabbing our first trophy, we end up taking control as Billy, and we end up getting another trophy for getting a headshot, which wasn't intentional, I just have really good aim. This game has auto aim, by the way, that's the only reason why I hit him. What? Bitch, you just got owned. We continue going through the train as Billy, and you can see here I'm practicing with my knife, and the reason being is, we're about to fight a boss battle. And in this boss fight, we need to kill him using only the knife, and it can be a bit tricky, so you just kinda wanna back up in the corner, and just start swiping away. So I practiced a bit, and then when I was confident enough, I was ready to take on. Dude, that's a big ass fucking scorpion. Jesus Christ. Look, I'll be honest, I played a lot of Resident Evil as a kid, but I only really remember zombies, dude. So, like, I'm not gonna lie, playing through some of these ones, I was kind of tripping. I'm like, am I always just fighting big ass creatures? But regardless, we keep swiping away until we're backed in a corner, but thankfully, we ended up finishing them off with the knife, and we got two trophies for doing so. And then we get to meet the real character of the Resident Evil series. That's right, the true main character, Daddy. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, Daddy. Sorry. Uh, Wesker, that's right, Wesker. So we get Wesker here, and he decides that he wants to destroy the train. You know, leave us all behind. So as Billy, I leave Rebecca in the main... Dude, what the fuck is the front of a train called? Like a cockpit or something? One second. Okay, so all I could find was this. Uh, either way, I'm not a botanist, I don't know. I left her at the front of the train and I made my way through hordes of zombies to get to the end. And on our way there, we managed to make our own Molotov cocktail, which was a trophy. Now, that took a bit of our time, unfortunately, but we still had two minutes left before the bomb was gonna go off, so we had to do a bit of a math problem. And look, man, I'm not the best at math. I got worse when they started putting like letters in it, but dude, I figured that out. All was good. And then they hit me with this. Now Rebecca has to do a math problem, but you don't get to see her first digit. What? Left me pretty confused, but in the end, we still had enough time to solve it. We stopped the train and Rebecca and I were safe. Or so we thought as we crashed and we made our way through the sewers and found our way in the testing facility where we popped another trophy. 
Now, coming out of the sewers, we end up in this facility here. And, of course, judging by the logo, you already know what's going on, right? The Umbrella Research Center, that's where we end up at. But we make our way over to some levers that we find on the top floor. And we find a key that's under a cage. So as Billy, I hold the cage up as Rebecca can grab the key. But, unfortunately, Mr. Krabs wasn't going to let us leave without a bit of his payment, if you know what I'm saying. Yoink. Rebecca gets taken, so we end up controlling Billy again. Now we're chucking mollies out like it's some sort of EDM festival, and then once we run out of that, we resort to our grenade launcher to finish him off. I like money. Inches away from death, I decide to use my first aid spray so that way we can be back at full HP, and then we move on to this small corridor. There's a lot of zombies in here, and I did get ambushed not knowing that they were here, but I ended up getting two trophies in this area, which was nice. I got one for blowing off his leg, and then I blew off him. No, I'm just kidding. I got grabbed and I squished the zombie's head. Oh my god, I almost died. No. I almost died. That was so scary. Thank you. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Next up, we have a miscellaneous trophy that we can earn by trying to push a bookcase as Rebecca because she's just not quite strong enough. And then we can move it with Billy. Now, of course, Billy can easily move this bookcase. I mean, God, look at those arms. Jesus Christ. Why are you gay? But one thing he can't do that Rebecca can is mix chemicals together, and that's going to be another trophy, so we do that. Now, we need to keep that for a bit later on anyway, so we go ahead and progress the story, and now Wesker's talking about destroying the facility. That's right, man. Wherever we go, he's trying to blow us, and I am all for it. And amongst the chaos, Rebecca actually falls in this hole, and she's hanging on for dear life. We're then given control over Billy, where we have to rush our way to go save her. And on the way, we go across these Planet of the Ape looking motherfuckers. And we can get a trophy here by shooting one out of the air. What's up? After that, we make it to Rebecca, save her, and then we get a bit more backstory about Billy and why he was a prisoner. And that, you know what? He's actually not that bad of a guy. We continue on after saving her and we find a briefcase and inside after putting in the combo we get some parts for our pistol. Upgrading the pistol will get us a trophy and then we can move on to the next area where we find our first mimicry. Now these can be a little bit tricky to kill but we're just going to use fire so we can get two trophies. After taking one down we need to calm our nerves so we play this banger. With our nerves calmed, we move on, and as you can see, there are items all over the floor. And that is because of the no item box. Isn't that great? We're out here looking like the, why can't I hold all the limes guy? Yeah, that's literally the whole game is juggling items like crazy, throwing them on the floor. And each screen also has a limitation on how many items you can drop. So, so yeah, hopefully you do like juggling items, because if you plan on going for this platinum, you're also going to be doing that on all of your multiple playthroughs. We have our items grouped up on that screen nearby in case we do need any because we're about to go to a boss fight. We're about to fight a giant pigeon, but there's a lot of trophies we can get here as well. So as we make our way to the final boss here, we made a backup save so we can do these trophies with ease. And the first one we're going to get is for getting grabbed by the boss. And then another tricky one for killing all of his minions. This can get annoying because of the auto aim and sometimes it aims on the boss instead. So then you're not even shooting the little ones and they kind of hit you for a lot of damage. So you die pretty quick. After getting grabbed though, we then reload our save and now we're trying for the minions and we're just shooting away, sometimes exiting and re-entering the doorway until we kill 16 of them. That's going to give us the wing spawn of Satan trophy and then our last trophy is just killing him. So I try to trap him in the corner here, get him stun locked and then just go to town on him. <coughs> Defeating him lets us go to the next area and that's where we get another trophy for progressing the story. We just avoid the mimicry by the train and then go to the next zone. We then meet Ricardo and instead of helping us, we end up fighting the next boss all by ourselves. So, um, yeah, thanks for that, Ricardo. Very nice job. Yo, that's not actually his name, bro. Uh, I heard his name in Resident Evil 1 and I forgot it again. I'm super pissed. And find him we shall. I'm not leaving without my boy Billy, but before we can get to him, we have to fight a proto-tyrant. And 
They can be pretty intimidating. My name is Jeff. I'm gay. That is until you actually fight them. All we really have to do is wait for him to lunge at us, quickly kite around the back of him, and then just keep shooting him in the ass. That's literally it. And I'm not joking. We're actually literally clapping his cheeks because it's just straight booty shots all the way to our trophies. And then he's dead. We're then back as Billy and we find out that if we stay on the elevator here, these enemies won't get us. So I quickly take them out and then honestly, it's right back to clap in the cheeks. That's right, boys. Now this one was a bit trickier because it's such a small space and his hitbox is fairly decent with the claw. So you have to be quick and then dodge it. But we ended up getting him down and then we can move on to what we thought was the final boss. Again, kind of goes back to the final boss being the fucking camera view because we have to keep auto aiming, hoping that we're shooting the boss and then just fire away. Now, if we do it this way, the boss kind of just keeps running around in a circle. It makes it a little bit easier and you can also prevent yourself from being grabbed. And Billy kind of takes some of the hits for you, but you can kind of just watch his health and make sure he doesn't die. After the boss goes down, we go down a lift and we find the true final boss. Now this one is best to try and kite around it at the back so he can't hit you. And Rebecca is pulling all of these wheels or these valves while we're basically just tanking the boss, watching both of their health, and we're also timed. So we just kind of keep the boss off of her, make sure she's healed up and she can do all the work, and then we just kind of wait until she can open up the factory or the warehouse, whatever the fuck this is. We're nearing the end of our first playthrough here and Rebecca finally gets it open. At the last second, she chucks us our gun and we deliver the killing blow to finish the game and get some more trophies. Billy! <gasps> hey, Queenie! Feast on this! Rebecca obviously wants Billy to stay, but Billy's not an idiot. He watched the boondocks and he knows it's homies over hoes and he sends his goodbyes. After beating the game, we unlock Leech Hunter mode and we also get Wesker mode unlocked. But what we need to do now is play Leech Hunter. Now this is a mode where you go through the entire facility and you basically just collect leeches. We have to clear out the facility and then pick them up but I need to make sure I get a good spawn first. As you can see there, there was a green and blue herb. So that's not really a good spawn. If I go ahead and back out of the game, reload and get a green and a green herb, then I'm gonna be set for this run. And then I'm gonna do that getting all of the leeches. And then after that, we're gonna do another one where we only get 50 of the leeches. Now, since we have to run this twice, it's gonna take a bit of time. So let's get right into it, boys. Next up, we need to beat the game while going for an S rank without saving, killing all of the bosses with Rebecca, and then we'll also unlock our final weapons. We're gonna pop four trophies here for doing this one. And towards the end, before we pop those, we're actually gonna save Billy from the boss, and that's gonna pop another miscellaneous trophy. Now we've got to start the Wesker playthrough. He can use guns and everything else, but he can also use his death stare and charge ability. Now there's a miscellaneous trophy for death staring over 50 enemies, so we just have to be mindful of it. Thankfully, I managed to get it by the time we made it to the Australian hallway, and I got it off one of the spiders. The dopamine wasn't going to end there though, because we also had to beat the game without using any first aid spray, 
herbs, or even chemicals. We had to do this all without healing, and with Wesker, it wasn't too bad, but we managed to pull through and pop all these trophies. Hey yo, what you call me? My name's Wesker, bro. What the fuck? Hey, Queenie. Oh, never mind. Feast on this. With our dopamine at an all-time high from that and the adrenaline pumping, I decided to go for a bit of a harder trophy. We had to defeat Mimicry Marcus with only a knife. And yeah. I wasn't doing too great at first. Bruh. Thankfully, by the third attempt, we had some good RNG. We still had a healing item as well, and we managed to pull through with the W. With more costumes unlocked, we put on the Team Wesker costume for a trophy, and then also another trophy would pop for just putting on a costume. With the ability to change costumes and we were on our hard playthrough, which would be the final playthrough for the Platinum, I decided to give Billy some drip with a nice suit, and then I put Rebecca in the Wesker outfit. However, the drip did not stop Billy from dying, so it just goes to show our lives are temporary, but drip, drip is forever. With all of our supplies ready, our heals, ammo, everything like that, we decided to go into the final boss, doing my best to stay on the side of him until Rebecca opened the door, and we would then blow up the facility, securing not only our last trophy, but the platinum trophy as well. We have fully completed Resident Evil Zero. And the Platinum Trophy couldn't be more suitable, with our giant ride being every single Resident Evil, including the spin-offs, you are goddamn right we want to go for a ride. And I hope you guys will have a great time with me as we go through completing every Resident Evil. Resident Evil. So normally at the beginning of a game, I like a roadmap or plan of attack. Now with this game, for some reason, there's one guide saying start as Chris, then another is Jill this and that so i sort of just took bits and pieces from different guides and sort of went an easier route that i would have thought and then i ended up messing up something anyway so yeah we uh we had to do a lot of playthroughs i'll just say that normally you can do this within five and uh your boy didn't do five <laughs> I'll tell you that right now now resident evil one i tried to play on stream i wasn't doing too great i was completely lost i couldn't keep up with chat um i killed zombies and then got punished i didn't kill zombies and i got punished man it was brutal so I ended up playing off stream, but we did get two trophies by accident. So you can check out how trash I did. Seriously, bro, go in your kitchen, look at the garbage bin. That's me cosplaying. I'm trash. Yo, come on, my boy. Come on, my boy, grab me, my boy. Don't actually grab me though. Bro, what the fuck? Oh my God, dude, I am trash can at this shit right now. Yeah, get fucked. I'm gonna put it in your booty hole. Damn, is he dead already? What the fuck? What's going on? Okay, you can't leave the mansion. I'll buy it. Oh, what the fuck? I don't even die. I just straight up like get. Oh my god, bro. I'm such a doorknob, dude. Yo, I was pressing like box and everything, my boy. What's going on? Trophy. I meant to do it. There you go, guys. In order to get the get used to it trophy, you have to. Um, Kill yourself on purpose. Awesome. We didn't save either. This is fucking awesome. God damn it. Oh, that, that one kind of looked good, bro. Like, if I was into chicks. What? Ooh. To be honest, bro, I'm already kind of lost again. Maybe we should try and use the map. Typewriter. Would the stairs be open now? More like rule 69. <laughs> Stop. Oh, shit. Did I press the front door? That was an accident. I wasn't paying attention, bro. For some reason, I thought I was at this door. I'm trash. Yo, I'm garbage. Fucking brain dead idiot, stupid dumbass. Like, Jesus. Oh, God. I, he got mad at me, bro. I went in, I went a little bit too in on him. That, that was my bad. Oh, get fucked, bro. Are you kidding me? 
Zombies that you kill but don't burn turn into crimson head. What the fuck is a crimson head? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this on stream, my boy. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is gonna be an off stream game, 100%. If you don't burn, then they come back and they run faster, bro. What the fuck, dog? Are you kidding me right now? That's trash. As you can see, we weren't doing too great on stream. Off stream, we managed to get a bit better at dodging the zombies, kind of baiting them out. But yeah, on stream, man, I had no idea what was going on. I was getting punished for killing zombies, then punished for not killing zombies. It was like, bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. I found myself exploring the cemetery where I found some shotgun ammo and, you know, a bit of other supplies. But I didn't have a shotgun, so that was great. But then I found a room where I could get a shotgun. So I grabbed the shotgun off the wall. Definitely can't be anything wrong with that. I mean, you know, why else would it be on the wall? Well, then I go to leave, and now we're trapped in a room where I'm going to get smashed. And not in the way I'd like to get smashed. This is definitely the most savage way to get smashed. But we meet the Giga Chat Barry, and at the last second, he pulls us out and saves us. So honestly, like, as far as I'm concerned, Barry can get it, bro. Like, straight up. That was a close one. A second late. You would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Okay. Doing this not only gives us the shotgun, but we also get a trophy. With our new shotgun in hand, we go ahead and take it for a spin. Then we're clearing a path to get to a safe room. Now the safe rooms are great in this game compared to Resident Evil Zero because... That's right, they have a fucking item box. No more juggling bullshit. After learning from chat that we can burn zombies so they don't come back as a crimson head, I do that and get a trophy. And I for some reason fucking stand in it. That's so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. After nearly burning ourselves, we decide to take a bath. And just like my childhood, my uncle came bursting out of the fucking bath. But in this case, it's a zombie, so it's a little bit less scary. One of the zombies we killed at the beginning of the game turned into a crimson head, and we got a trophy for killing one. We make our way down the hall and we find Richard and it turns out he was bit by a snake so we had to go get a serum. The only problem is, the serum's not gonna do much for him. Here Richard, I'm gonna give you a shot. Hang in there. Does it ever not hurt? Shit, in about three seconds. Cause you died, but we got a trophy boys. Richard may be dead, but we go ahead and we give him a proper memorial. We played the piano. And make sure that we will never forget. His name was Richard, wasn't it? After paying respects, we're pissed off. We go hunting for the snake and we find it. What the fuck? Snake. Now we're stuck trying to fight the snake. So we're kind of kiting him around the pillars. Sort of just staying away because, you know, he's got a lot of reach, man. This guy's a big boy. So we just keep running around. He's kind of stupid, though, because he just gets stuck on the pole. And then out of nowhere, bro. Shotgun blast. Who is it? He's not dead, bro. Richard, bro, I knew you weren't dead, my boy. Look, I didn't even mean to play that song. You're about to die, aren't you? Bruh. Richard saves our life after we saved his, and he sacrifices himself. He drops his shotgun, we pick it up, and we use it to defeat the snake. I'm a sweathery little snake and snake. After blasting him a few times, he realizes he's losing, and he's got a full belly, so he gets the hell out of there, but we get a trophy for this encounter. Okay, this time, for real this time, yeah. We find a hidden passage under the cemetery, and with our four masks, we place them all on the statue, then summoning a mini-boss kind of enemy. And when we defeat him, we're gonna get another trophy. All we did was stand back and continue to use the grenade launcher, and we made quick work of him. Our next area has Lisa Trevor in it, and actually some really sad lore behind this one, and if you wanted to look into it, you could, because it's pretty fucked up. We shoot her once, and then we make a break for it to the garden, but then we're jumped by some dogs, and I try to hide in the corner here to just take them out with a shotgun, because again, we're fighting the camera view boss, and sometimes even the enemies are fighting the camera view boss. I mean, look at this. What the dog doing? What the fuck? And of course, it wouldn't be Resident Evil without an Australian section. So we get to these spiders, and I can't fucking stand spiders, so I'm just like... <laughs> After escaping, we think we're safe, but you're never safe. Gotcha, bitch! 
We make our escape and we hear a familiar voice at a door. It sounds like our boy Barry. But it's not necessary to destroy stars. Hmm. Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Why the fuck you lying? After realizing Barry's a liar, we decide to leave the area. We make it here with... Dude, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I know I said this in Resident Evil Zero, but like, I just remember as a kid, you know, you're playing, you're killing all these zombies. Dude, this, this is a fucking giant shark tank, bro. We're in a giant shark tank. This shit was the Fast and Furious before it was the Fast and Furious, you know what I'm saying? And as you can see, the sharks aren't as scary because, well, we can fucking walk on land and they can't. So I drain the water, obviously. It's literally like the easiest thing you could do against a shark. They're trying to break in because they're pissed off. I put on the like the little security thing. And then bam, I go back to draining the water. And then we find the idiot in like the shallowest pool of the water. So what do we do? That's right, man. We make some flake. You know what that is? Fried shark. It's a common term here in Australia and you should try it because that shit slaps. Probably harder than my stepdad. Not sure though, that motherfucker had a backhand. And that's gonna get us another trophy. After eating our fish and chips, we make it to this room with a giant plant. But that's okay, the plant's going away, so we should be fine, right? I mean, it's just a room with a giant ass fucking plant. Awesome, you get grabbed, of course you do. But that's okay, boys, because Barry's gonna come out of nowhere again to save our ass with a flamethrower. But then he gets picked up too. So now we're having like a three-way, shit's going crazy. He just burns him down, and then we, we get out. We escape because of Barry. So again, he's the goat. We just kind of don't really trust him at the moment. But shortly after, we find our final key and get another trophy. We part ways with Barry again, but we end up running into Wesker, and he decides to put a little bit more suspicion into our ear about this Barry fellow. Jill, so you're safe. Did you notice? Barry, he sounded a little flaky. Now that you mention it, yeah. Wesker puts that shit in our mind, and then shortly after, we're being hunted down by a hunter. But if we can kill him, we could secure another trophy. So I had to be quick about this. Look, bro, we had a Magnum, so that motherfucker got rocked. And then, of course, back in Australia, had like, dude, we were surrounded by spiders. Did I mention I can't fucking stand spiders, dude? After making it through that gauntlet of oversized bugs and animals, we think we're finally free. But that's right. You remember this guy, don't you? I'm a snack. Just kidding, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that again. What I am gonna do though is give him two acid rounds to the face and then another one before going down the ladder. And then as he's coming down after me, he's still vulnerable. So what I'm gonna do is quickly aim my grenade launcher, take him out, and this time for good, so we can secure another trophy. After killing the snake, I search the area for supplies and then we end up in a tunnel where we find Enrico. You may remember him from Resident Evil Zero, the guy I messed up the name before. But look, man, he's trying to warn Jill. Someone is double crossing. We have no idea who it is, right? It's obviously Barry, bro. Like, Wesker be telling us it's Barry. Barry's been kind of acting sus. Look, man, if one plus one is three, then it's Barry. Enrico gets taken out, and then we're forced to play a level of Crash. So we run to the nearest exit and then try and jump for it. Now, in hindsight, I should have let the boulder kill me because, as you recall, I can't stand spiders, bro. And, of course, there's a giant spider in a small room. Thankfully, we have a grenade launcher, and we're going to secure another trophy by blowing him to bits. Now, during my playthrough, the scientists over at Bushido Cypher's headquarters actually noticed the boob physics in this game, man. Like, why, why are they actually so good, bro, for a game like this? this? This was the scientist that noticed that because then in Resident Evil 3 Remake, no jiggle, bro. They're just rocks. And then, bro, if you look at Revelations, no jiggle, bro. Anyways, yeah, the scientists, man, they got too much time on their hands. Um, but yeah, we find Barry again. He's still looking really dodgy. Start talking. He tries to shoot us, but we snatch his gun. So then we have to actually decide, do we give his gun back or not? Because here comes an enemy and we're going to need some backup. So we decide to trust him and that also gets us the next trophy. Thanks, 
Now that we have Barry as backup, he can focus on trying to keep the boss off of us while we drop these boulders. Once all of them are dropped down, the coffin will open up. She can grab her mother's skull and then jump off the ledge. Bye, have a great time. With the boss defeated, we solve a puzzle to drain the fountain and then find this underground facility where we pop a trophy. Now there's a safe room in this area and there's also three zombies and I realized I never got a trophy for burning two zombies at once. So I decided to try and get it on this playthrough so we can just get it knocked out of the way. I wait for them to group up and try and take them out so they land on top of each other and then I go to light them on fire. Hello there. But as you can see, he got up. So thankfully I had a backup save. I just reload my backup save and then try again. Now that that miscellaneous trophy is out of the way, we decide to keep moving forward. And this is where we come across some pretty intimidating enemies. These bug like things can just grab you or like corner you. And you can see just how quick I get overwhelmed right here. That could be the difference of me dying. <laughs> Making it to the end of the game, things are starting to make more sense now. And, um, yeah, here we go. Thank you, Barry. Well, what do you know? Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. I hear that his better half and two lovely daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. <sighs> Wesker, you're pathetic. So once again, Barry's back to being the goat. We finally figured out why he was doing this and his reasons are justified. But Wesker, the idiot, lets out a tyrant and now we're left to fight him. Bro, listen to Wesker, this goofy dude. And Barry together in hell. What? Premature. Ah! No, Barry. Just like Resident Evil Zero, though, these guys are no. Actually, they're worse. Holy shit! He he's just dropped, man. Like he's dead. So we flex on him a little bit. Yeah. Wesker. Wow, Jill, so observant. I just can't understand how observant you are. But before we leave the facility, we can't just make a break for it. Everything's going to shit, but our boy Chris is locked up in a cell. So we free him so he can escape with us. And if you remember, this playthrough, we were doing the trophy every nook and cranny, which means we've explored every room and we picked up every single item. And you have to literally pick up every item too, otherwise it doesn't count. So it's really good we have an item box in this one. Then when we make it to the top of the roof, our trophy pops. We signal for the helicopter to come save us, but if you thought that tyrant was dead that we fought earlier, you're just like me. Trash. That's right. He's still alive and kicking. He ah! knocks out Chris, and then it's Barry and I left to fight him. Now, I wasn't doing too great at the start. He would randomly turn around and just bonk me. Or again, sometimes the camera view was the boss and it was just completely screwing me over. That's what I Like, bro, what is this camera view right here? Like, you can see me run in a circle and then boom. Ooh. After dying a few times, he grabs me. I finally get the RPG out, but I'm unable to use it. Barry's popping a cap in his ass, literally. And then I manage to get out of his grip. I take a step back, I shoot it, and I get to blow him to bits. It was absolutely magnificent, and it popped me two trophies. The good news is that's not all the trophies we popped. We also popped one for normal, easy, and very easy difficulty, which was a nice little hit of dopamine. Jill, you did a fine job. That completes our first out of five playthroughs. So the next one we could do is real survival mode. We just unlocked it and we also got another costume which goes towards another trophy. So we have to beat the game in under three hours on real survival mode. We're going to try and combine those two and we're also going to not save anyone. Now at the start, I kept getting killed or not even really killed, but I'd make too many mistakes and I would ruin my time. So I just restart. However, since I have room temp IQ, I must have accidentally hit hard mode when I restarted instead of real survival. The good news is we still did get four trophies. 
We obviously could have got more if I realized that I wasn't on real survival. That's okay. We start Chris's playthrough. It's essentially the same layout, but he does have more health. He has less inventory space, but he was also really fun to play as. We made our way through the mansion as we found Rebecca, and then we got to play as Rebecca for a little bit. Remember her from our Resident Evil Zero adventure? And we had to get a serum for Chris playing as Rebecca. So we ran all the way back to the safe room, grabbed the serum, and then returned to Chris. Chris then thanks us for basically curing him, and then maybe he'll pay it forward in the future. Who knows? I owe you one. Where we fought the guy under the cemetery is now for a secret object for Chris and a trophy. Now this time when we come across this plant as Chris, we can just nuke it to death. That'll get us a really easy trophy, and then in that area where the snake was, we can then pick up another item for a trophy. Remember when I said Chris will pay it forward? Well, that time is now. A hunter's gonna get Rebecca, so we just blast him to hell. Toasty! We then find our final weapon for another trophy. We then take out Lisa again, but this time as Chris, and we also save Jill. Jill, sorry I made you wait. I knew you'd come. We then killed the final boss again, and this time we were gonna pop a lot of trophies. We get one for saving Rebecca and Jill, finishing the game with Jill and Chris, and then just also beating it with Chris. Chris I did another playthrough as Chris, making sure that I saved no one, finished the game only using my knife, and then we unlocked our final costume. I then did another playthrough, this time as Jill, and I had to beat the game without saving it. I then finally went back to do the real survival playthrough and I played as Chris just because he's a bit tankier in case I made any mistakes. With all of those playthroughs behind us, including the one that I had to do again because I'm an idiot, we had one more playthrough. And that's right, you can already see it coming. Or maybe you can't. Because this playthrough here is the John Cena playthrough where every zombie is invisible. You can't see him, boys. Now when they do grab you, you can actually see them for just a little bit of time, but obviously you still don't want to be grabbed like I just did. But yeah, that's pretty much the playthrough and um, yeah, for some reason Barry can fucking see them. I don't understand. Dude, he's just a god, bro. He's just a god. So in this playthrough, all we wanted to do was race to the end and that was our final trophy. We've got the platinum. Obviously it doesn't end there though, boys, because next up we got Resident Evil 2. Also as a thank you from the devs, they put this in the game at the end. Bruh. The fuck is that, bro? Look at some of those costumes, man. Anyways, let's get after it. In this video, I want to get the Platinum Trophy for the Resident Evil 2 Remake, but I also want to get the DLC trophies. I want that beautiful 100%, so we're going to need a plan of attack. Now our first playthrough will be Leon A's route. This is going to be on assisted for collectibles and miscellaneous trophies. Now our second step is Claire A, assisted as well for the collectibles. And then we'll go on to Leon B with our hardcore run. We'll go for the true ending, under 14,000 steps and no healing. That basically means we can't heal the entire game and we have to do under 14,000 steps. So you can't really be mindlessly walking around. Then we're going to do Claire B for step four. That's going to be on hardcore to get the hardcore trophy and then we're going to do claire b assisted again and that's to get the final collectibles as well as not use the item box so we're looking at five playthroughs of the main game but for the dlc we're going to do a playthrough for the collectibles and then we're going to complete hell of a sheriff which is a challenge mode that unlocks other than that my final trophy i want to be unlocked through the force survivor mode where we play as hunk i think it's really badass and this would be a good way to get the platinum and the 100 percent right at the end with our plan of attack established, let's get after it. Oh shit, my boy. He's not even gonna cook it first. He's just gonna go straight in. Isn't there a key in here? Yeah, I, I kind of remember that. Wow. My man did not mark his dates off the calendar, bro. <laughs> no organization, bro. Pathetic. After escaping the gas station, we make our way towards RPD. Now this is where we get our first trophy, a story related one, and it locks us in for our platinum. We get a few easy ones at the start, like boarding up a window. 
Look at him, bro. He's trying to get he's trying to get a snack. He got the right idea. We can get our knife kill here. Look, man. Yo, look at the detail of that, bro. We then make our way to Leon's desk, and since we remember our passcode, we open that up for a trophy. And then we also get an additional inventory space, which pops another trophy, and we find our first of many collectibles shortly after. Hey, first breaking. How do I hear a fucking Zambi in the background, though? Vermination? Or, wait, vermination? Bruh. I just combined those two words. My bad, I have Lysdexia, bro. After finding two herbs, we combine those for a trophy, and then we even have a pistol upgrade that we can combine for another trophy. Our next trophy is in the bathroom, so we carefully make our way there, and I mean carefully. I think she's dead. We find the portable safe, and all you have to do to open it is just keep clicking the buttons in a certain order and then memorizing the order as you go. It's just basically trial and error until you get it open. Moving on, we run into Claire, and this was the confidence booster that I needed to get through these playthroughs. But Marvin made sure to shut that down real quick because now he's putting all this shit on me. That's right. It's up to us to stop this from spreading. That gets us a story-related trophy, but then we end up getting ambushed by the dude from Scary Movie. That's right. Use my strong hand. But we end up making quick work of him. I mean, dude, we're Leon Kennedy. There's no shot he has a chance against us. We basically back him into a corner, and then he's forced to fall off the ledge. And then we can make our way through the rest of the sewers. Alright. Wow, I fucking missed. Eat that, bitch. Hey, and bon appetit. We got, the, we got the two birds with one scone. Like skeet shooting, shoot a zombie dog or liquor out of the air. Oh, shit. Hang on, we can try it on him. You fucking dick. Oh, I got it. Hey. I knew I was going to get it, bro. I was just calling him a dick for fun. After getting three trophies off those dogs, we were feeling pretty excited until we ran into this guy. So what do we do? That's right. We help him tip his fedora for another trophy, and then we skedaddle on out of there because he is one intimidating son of a bitch, let me tell you. Back in the lobby of RPD, we see Marvin, and unfortunately, he's met his fate. So we give him a nice mercy killing. Like, bro, you use the rocket launcher. We find ourselves in the prison cells down below, and in this area here, there's actually another trophy we can get while the zombies are all grouped up. All we have to do is throw a grenade while they're grouped up, and we'll get the trophy. It's best just run through and then do it. Hey, zombie roundup. Damn, they all got fucking pwned. Quick note from Jill for a DLC trophy, and then we're running for our life. Bro, you need to chill, my boy. Holy shit! That's my thoughts exactly, bro. And it's gonna be cold tonight, asshole. Ooh. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Chew on that. Bro, Leon's always had corny lines, but my man can get away with it because he's hot. What did he say? But actually, all jokes aside, he, he, he really is. Like, look at this, man. I can be your hero, baby. Oh, and then Mr. X is back. Oh, shit, bro. I don't think I ever went the right way. It's for the fucking lever, isn't it? God damn it, bro. I just brought him to this small-ass ledge here, bro. No way he can come down the ladder. Oh, he can't. Bro, bro, bro. All right, we're gonna we're gonna fake it, fake it. No, nope, we didn't fake it. He just fucking like yeeted us. I'm in him. I'm in him right now. Did I miss something? Oh god, please, please. I'll be good. You fucking dickhead, dude. Yeah, we're probably gonna get wrecked right here. Oh, open it. That still didn't work, bro. I really have no fucking idea, bro. This this is a hundred percent a reload. How am I not dead? Oh, what the fuck, bro? Why did it just all of a sudden open? Yeah, I did so bad on that part, but then we end up getting locked in a furnace as Ada, and we only just barely make it out of there, where we then take control of Leon again, and since we did that whole area without using her gun and only using the hacking device, we got another trophy. On our way to another boss, we find our last safe, so we crack that for another trophy. Nope! Oh, I missed! This man just bitch smacked me! Alright, let's kite him back over this way. Oh, I think that might be in range. I don't really know, man. 
And with the RPG, I should be good. No, he moved. No, he didn't. Let's go, bro. And then once you set it to Wumbo, my boy, you get the last upgrade for a trophy. A waste of space. I didn't know they named a trophy after me. We then beat the final boss, getting all the collectibles throughout our first playthrough on assisted. Then that way we can go on to Claire's playthrough. That was a tentacle, bro. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. A hero emerges. 31 saves, an A. Four hours and 40 minutes. Let's be honest, bro. That's the fucking puzzles, man. My brain was like... It's the final brain cell. Be -de -de -de. Right, we gotta do the lion. There's a film in here, isn't it? Oh, shit, bro. That There's a film in here, isn't it? Oh, shit, bro. That... Come on and make my day, asshole. He can grab me, right? Can he grab me and I can flashbang him? Or it has to be like... I smell pennies! I don't know, just straight up fucking... Just do it. <laughs> okay. Old man Jenkins puts us in some handcuffs and then takes Sherry from us. But Claire's a badass and she won't stand for this. Get you, you fucker! <laughs> now we take control of Sherry and we actually have to do a puzzle to get out of the room. And we have to do this in under a certain time limit for a trophy. So we find the block in this doll, we put it in the puzzle, do the puzzle as quick as we can, grab the scissors, and cut our way out for the trophy. Now as we escape, he ends up catching us, but Sherry's not going to go down without a fight. Call an ambulance! But not for me! She buys us enough time to rescue her as Claire, and then we get to play as Claire again. Now all we really had to do was defeat the final boss, but I realized we were missing a trophy back at RPD, and that was for using the photo to find treasure. So I grabbed that trophy, and then I made my way back to the final boss. So this game has two different paths for each character, Leon A and Leon B, and then Claire A and B. We finished both the A's, now I'm moving on to the B for Leon, and that's going to be able to get us all the raccoons for another trophy. We also have to beat this playthrough going under 14,000 steps and without healing. Now do you remember the part where we take control as Ada, and I was kind of shitty at it? Well. Nothing's changed. Bro, he's not gonna go down? No shot, you didn't go down, you fucking dick. Alright, ready? We're gonna bait the swing. Alright, we baited the swing. We baited the swing. Good job. Good job, Ada. We made it to the final boss, and beating him would give us the true ending. So we got to have a happy ending after all. It's night. <laughs> yeah. That would have been one hell of a first date, though. Yeah. You have no idea. Look, he might be able to give us a ride. Never mind. That dude was a dick. Done. Done deal banana peel, bro. Broken umbrella. Brugalist. A small carbon footprint. As for getting under 14,000 steps, I think I was at 12,000. We move on to Claire's other playthrough on hardcore after making sure that we set up her trip. And then we're ready to go. Claire. Damn, she happy as fuck to so see Leon. I can't even blame her, bro. That's me, man. Especially with the nude mod on PC. Wait, wait, what did he say? We got, oh shit, bro, look. We got the trophy, man. Hardcore college student. Two more gold trophies, the sizzling Scarlet Hero. Now the trophy list was cleaning up nicely. We only needed Lore Explorer and Minimalist, which is clearing the game without using the item box. And then the last collectible was in Claire's alternate playthrough. So I, again, put on the drip. We grab the collectible, and then we defeat the final boss. The only problem is, I was running out of ammo, man. I'm not going to lie. So it ended up putting me in a situation. Situation is like a word I would use in this scenario that means I died. Yeah, I, I died. He, he fucked me out. But we made it this far. I wasn't going to give up. I found gunpowder in the train. Like, what an idiot, dude. He had gunpowder right here. So he basically secured my victory. We had more than enough ammo to take him down. I'm gonna actually die. Oh, 
boys. With the base game trophies basically done, I hop straight into the DLC, which is where we play each survivor's scenario, and we worry about collectibles as we go, and pretty much just try to survive and make it to the end. Now these can be done on training, which makes it much more easier, and you just utilize all the supplies you can, but also you can get poisoned and a bunch of other annoying things. Oh, what? I'm dead. Yeah, I'm fucked. Bro, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, I was not ready for this, man. Bro, fuck off. Oh my god, bro. I swear to god. I was not expecting all this, man. Now, of course, I finished it, but I missed the collectible, so we had to come back and do it again. Hello. Right here in this fucking tunnel, man. That's the collectible we missed. Fuck, bro. Do I have to go open the, the gate first before I can go in there? Oh, it opened it. Okay. Let's go. Let's be quick. They're fast. Oh. Burn his ass. Who's after me? Done. After finishing all the survivors, I unlock No Way Out. Now this mode can't be done on training and I would find out that this was the hardest challenge for me. Admittingly, I did play this game when it came out on release and I actually did get the platinum, but I never did get to come back to the DLC and in some ways that was kind of a blessing because goddamn, I was getting wrecked. Having basically every other trophy in the game, I go into this with a false sense of confidence. I feel that I truly have this. What an idiot. I was trying to get the collectible this time, boys. Open it. Got him. Got him. <laughs> That's the trophy. I gotta kill a hundred of these bastards. Oh, where are they all at? Let's try and get this flame guy up on them. Oh. oh, really? If I would've known that, I would've done it a smarter way. Bruh. There's a zombie right in front of me, so I'm just trying to think what I can do really quick. No, oh, I had to reload! I was gonna shoot the fucking tank, bro. And I'm stuck. Okay. Fuck me, right? I was literally fucking stuck, dude. They're not really next to it, but I don't know what else I could do, man. Bro, what the fuck? Oh, not the nut sack. Oh, all right, that was all right. We kind of had to use that though. Oh, the guy's coming up on me. Got news for you. That means you're gay. Yeah, I was gonna try and save the rockets, but I'm literally stuck. I'm stuck. Wow, awesome. Thank you. That killed me? What? Bro, no shot that killed me. Oh no, I should have got the other dude. The ball sack guy. No, no, I'm dead. That's dead. No, that's not dead. Run. Oh, what the fuck, bro? Don't trap myself. Idiot. Oh wow, don't burn myself. Idiot. Oh wow. No, I'm I'm grabbed. I'm dead right here. I'm so low health. No, bro. Not dead. 
fuck, dude. We were right at the end, bro. I'm so triggered. <sighs> I'm so triggered, bro. I just want you guys to meet Steve. This is Steve here. Uh, we're supposed to lure him to the front. But, uh, yeah, here we are. Oh, is this boobies? After regaining some of my sanity back, we decided to do one more attempt because I really wanted to get this platinum, but I did have to go to bed for work soon, and it was four in the morning. And with only five left, you can tell I was in a panic. Bro, we'll just pop out the shoddy, right? Oh, shit. Oh, shit, I'm in danger. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Fuck. Massive. Look at this fucking... There's two noobs on the ground, bro. There's only two noobs left. Little nooblets. Should we just roast them, bro? Just make a little zombie barbecue. 99, baby. Where's the 100? You want to get roasted? Is it you, my boy? What we got in the bag, bro? The spark shot? Look, man. We're going to go out with a little bit of motherfucking style, shall we? Because I had had it with these motherfucking zombies up in my motherfucking gas station, bitch. Hell of a sheriff. First fucking try, like, nah, dude, he died like four times. Something. Whew. That was brutal. Now, with the DLC done, I decided to return to the base game because I left one trophy for last so we could pop the 100% and platinum together, and that was playing the Four Survivor. You play as Hunk, otherwise known as the Grim Reaper. This is super badass. You're basically traversing the entire map of Resident Evil 2 to make it to the front exit to be extracted. It just makes you feel super badass when you do it. Oh shit, they spawned already. Oh shit. Oh shit, I don't know if I was supposed to use that, but hey. End of the day, fuck it, right? Bye, liquor. Ooh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not even gonna use this anymore. Oh, bro, please. Oh. Oh, let's go. Oh, boy. Hey, I got a flight to catch my boy and you in the way, brother. Thank you. That's the trophy, boys. Oh, that's the trophy, the platinum, the 100%, all of it. The Grim Reaper. Let's go, boys. Oh, let's fucking go. Raccoon City native. We did it, boys. And there it is. Three Resident Evil Platinums, including some DLC. I'll be doing more of these as well, so I can put it all in a giant video for you guys. So I do hope you enjoy it. And if you're one of my real ones who made it to the end, why don't you leave a comment below that says, Hell of a Sheriff. Other than that, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I'll see you next time in the big Resident Evil video. And here's a big shout out to our Patreon and YouTube supporters.